Okay, there you go. And within our own uh, cohort and, and past alums who have taken either the design thinking course or the uh, innovation and Dolly course, they've gone on to organizations that are known to be highly innovative, uh, where innovations are critical to their mission, to their values, and using a lot of the concepts that we talk about, the tools, frameworks, and approaches that organizations use to innovate. And what better way for us to learn than to bring that context to these real life situations? And I, you know, I can provide examples, but hearing it from those who are in the weeds of innovation, in the companies that have the DNA that emphasize innovation, the, that have kind of cracked the code in terms of what it means to have an innovative organization or uh, embedded in its culture, which is often one of the biggest barriers and challenges of a legacy company to move from historical views or historical patterns, historical processes and behaviors and institutions and structure to one that has embraces innovation, if it's a mindset, culture, values. So I'm happy to share, and I want to make sure that um, they kick off this meeting first, and you know later on we'll either do, deal Q and A or some other topics to reinforce what we shared. But uh, some of you know Riley Hitchcock from the Design Thinking course, but others don't. But he's also a past alumni, and he is a trailblazer in oftentimes what MBA is used for: career transition and a wonderful uh, colleague who wants to give back to the community after um, going through the design thinking course. It challenged students to be more engaged, to create the program, and he stepped up on a um, big way, both in that class and this class and going forward, no doubt. So I would like to turn the meeting over to Riley and for him to introduce uh, his colleague, um, and let's give Riley a big round of applause. And I'm going to, so you have the floor. Thank you for being here today. Thank, thank you, uh, Dr. D. And, and thank you to uh, the students on the phone. This is certainly exciting. I'd, I'd love to give back. Uh, you know, uh, was able to come down and, and give a presentation to the students in the design thinking class, uh, graduated in 2018. But I thought that the innovation class and that design thinking was one of the most impactful programs or courses that I took throughout my uh, tenure at USF St. Pete and really got a lot from it, from it and then find myself at an organization that really embraces innovation at its core. So I, I see we've got Gisela in the room. I think uh, I remember you from, from that class in January. I think a couple of others were in that class as well, but um, so I, I'm Riley Hitchcock, for those that don't know, know you, my title is Senior Solutions Engineer uh, here at Salesforce. What that is is a fancy way, way of uh, saying sales support and sales engineer. So we support our account executives in our territories who are really kind of the frontline uh, people of engagement with our customers. And really our, our job is to come in, do deep discovery, understand goals and challenges of the organization at a high level and then map those back to ultimately our solutions and products. But today, I also want to introduce uh, my counterpart. Thank you, Claire Zell. Uh, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. Appreciate you for take, taking the time this Saturday morning and jumping in here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Riley, for including me. And it's so nice to see everyone here this morning. Um, Claire Zell Hirschlein. I'm a lead solution engineer at Salesforce. Um, I'm in my third year at Salesforce. And I'll tell you, it's it's been the best three years of my career so far. Uh, my background's with Deloitte Consulting prior to coming on board, and I've had the privilege to work with Riley for, gosh, I feel like it's been a year now, right? Uh, Eight months, while. but yeah, we're, we're, we're quickly shooting toward a year. Yeah, it, it's just been an incredible journey. Happy to have innovators on our team. Um, so I'm excited to have some discussions today about the power of innovation. Awesome. I just want to confirm everybody can see my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Uh, anybody? Good? Yes, Perfect. we can see it. Yes. Yes. Awesome. So, I mean, the big thing that we lead with here at Salesforce is just thanking everybody, thanking our customers. Without you and, and 
those that are the innovators right alongside us, um, you know, none of this would be possible. But uh, to dive in today, I kind of wanted to start with just like Salesforce at the core, um, you know, really with the golden circle. I know some of you may have may uh, have some insights into the Simon Sinek book. Uh, you know, start with why. I know Claire Zell uh, has read this book, and it's a it's a big proponent uh, in, at the core of her as well. But I think when I think of Salesforce, it's like just starting with the platform for change. And you know, from our CEO right here, the power of business as the greatest platform for change. Really, kind of starting with the the core of why. And we'll get into kind of how innovation uh, is part of that why in in moving forward. So, Claire Zell, I'd love for you to add a little color around this. I know you've got. Uh, a lot of uh, thoughts here as well. Yeah, no, thanks, Riley. Um, when I first heard of this concept presented by Simon Sinek, it just hit me so hard um, because, you know, it, it, in the grand scheme of things, most of the successful companies um, or even successful individuals always have to reflect internally as to why they're even doing something in the first place. Um, this was also part of my interview pitch with Salesforce, um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, understanding that at the heart of everything that they do, the customer is, is you know, truly centered around that why, and we're just trying to help them, um, you know, drive towards digital transformation uh, through the solutions that we offer. So I hold this near and dear. I challenge myself always to go through this line of thinking um, whenever I'm trying to, uh, or, or when I'm faced with a situation or I'm reflecting internally. So uh, it, it's a great practice. Any questions from the group? Honestly, we're going to you know, kind of keep this open. I've got one additional slide to present to really um, set the table for some of that Q&A, but just wanted to pause here if there's any questions to this point. Can you give us a quick 10 second pitch about what Salesforce does? Um, yeah, I, the long and short is uh, we're really this platform uh, that was born and bred as a CRM and have added a number of products we were born in the cloud um you know which is first and foremost kind of our lead uh, we are kind of innovators in that space and we're cloud first technology but ultimately we're really kind of building this customer 360 by connecting sales service marketing um, platform technology from an it perspective industries customers and communities and partners uh, to really build out this single platform in this single pane the customers ultimately have uh, the most robust insights into their uh, into their customers. Great, thanks. Absolutely, thanks for the question, Raymond. So, uh, how is Salesforce really a platform for, for innovation? I think it really starts at our core, really with our values, leading with with innovation. And these are more than just words. I think that you see these lived and breathed at Salesforce every day. Obviously, organizations have visions and missions uh, that ultimately kind of become stale. They become words on a wall and the organization truly kind of moves away from them. And it really kind of goes back to that point of why. Salesforce truly lives our why. And you start to see organizations that kind of deviate from that, that start to become just, just product focused, delivering you know, innovation through new, new products, but really don't innovate across the board and really don't have it in our DNA. And I think that's the big thing here. It's really one of our core values. It's woven into our DNA and it's promoted through the organization. And then on top of our values is really uh, our Ohana. And I'd love for Claire Zell to kind of step into to what that means and how it uh, is championed throughout the organization and how we are empowered to, to innovate, both from a non-financial and a financial uh, incentive. Yeah, so th thank you, Riley. Um, when I first joined Salesforce, I think the whole concept of Ohana, it, it gave me a different perspective. At the end of the day, um, you are only as successful as your team. We win as a team, we lose as a team. Um, we collaborate together uh, across the board. Um, you know, we're, we're open to each other's feedback, um, which is just so incredibly important in today's time, especially in terms of innovation, right? Like if we're thinking about collaboration um, and, and feedback, we have this concept called a start, stop, keep. That's just an example where the team can uh, get together internally and, you know, for our leadership, um, we're like, okay, what can our leaders start doing? What should they stop doing? And what should they keep doing? 
And that's just a really quick example of how we all get together, collaborate, and then think and brainstorm through ideas in terms of how we can continuously operate better together as a team. Um, above and beyond, that's also just a couple of examples of where, you know, we always strive to do a little bit more, or help others in a different capacity, and that's something that's celebrated within Salesforce. Riley, I don't know if I missed anything or, or if that's what you were looking for there. No, no, that's great, and I think that it, it leads into my next point of when you think of innovation, sometimes it, it just stems toward product innovation. And, you know, when we think about it, we think about how do we innovate processes? I think Claire Zell was touching on that with her, her start, stop, keep uh, framework. <clears throat> how do you know, how do you innovate processes as you go? And then also, how do you innovate people? Um, you know, a big thing at Salesforce is enablement, uh, continuous learning. And I think that that really is the fa is super foundational for driving that, uh, that innovation, both uh, through our people and, and, and within our people. And I think ultimately that, you know, that kind of leads to that, that ability to innovate products. We're, we're always innovating. We're always moving forward with our products. I mean, yes, we do acquire companies, but we have entire teams that are dedicated to innovation, entire teams that are dedicated to <clears throat> moving, um, you know, our customers forward, both through their feedback, through the internal feedback, and then ultimately through our community's feedback, which we're going to get into it in just a moment. Ultimately, all that makes uh, all that is really what encompasses at the most highest level the Salesforce organization. Uh, any questions um, to this point? Hey, Riley, it's Gisela. Um, I just wanted to say I was uh, stationed in Hawaii with the Army and Ohana. Man, we use that word. Um, to describe a lot of things we, I mean, I think we used to, in the army on, you know, at Schofield, we would say like, it's Ohana Friday, right? It would be a family day. Instead of calling it a day off, it was a reminder that you're going to have, you know, your Ohana with your team at work, and then you were going to get off kind of early, like an Aloha Friday, mm -hmm. right? We take both of those time frames, And I know um, when you start calling your team Ohana, right, family, it creates a different feel. So I love that you're doing that. I don't think I remember that from before. So I don't know if that's new, but it's, it's, it's pretty cool. No, that's, uh, that's one of our, our key words. And it's, it's always been used since the, since the beginning when, when Benioff founded the company, um, you know, he was, he was in Hawaii, he's Hawaii native. So Ohana is, uh, a, you know, a core, a core word for him and how we refer to everybody within the organization internally. So almost could be a value if, if a fifth value, that. if you will. Sure. Cool. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to say. No, no, no. Please jump in. Absolutely. Claire, as well, do you want to add any color kind of to, to the Ahana? You've been, been with the organization longer than I have. You can probably speak a little more to that. Yeah, you know, I, I think the Ohana, it's, it's everyone who touches or interacts, uh, you know, with us across the board. So, you know, the concept of Ohana uh, from a Salesforce perspective is our customers, it's our employees, it's our partners, and it's our family. Um, and, and we blend all of that together. And, and it's just, you know, from a personal perspective, I'll, I'll share here, my husband actually got in a, in a really terrible accident a couple of months ago. Um, and he, you know, it was an ATV accident. He broke all of his ribs um, and I needed to step away. You know, I just needed to take some time to kind of deal with that. Um, Riley texted me, my leadership team reached out. My boss is on the phone with me. He's like, look, there's no expectations. You need to focus on your personal life right now. Um, and, and Riley stepped in and took care of, of all of the different deliverables and things that we still needed to do at work. Um, and then my entire team also came together and they got meals delivered for us for two weeks. And that's just a really quick example of how something happens to you personally, but you have this incredible Ohana to back you up and support you during that time. So I'm happy to report that he's on the mend, but during times like this, I couldn't be more grateful to be part of a group who's there to, to support you in any way in terms of what's happening. Yeah, I appreciate that call on Claire's. And I think that really kind of stems back to that innovation. I think that when you think about innovating um, you know, people and processes. This is a perfect example of how we do it different. But if if innovation wasn't at our core, you might not see that um, that transpire to you know what Claire has all experienced. If I could just uh, pipe in for a moment, um, you know, we we talk about a lot of concepts within this class and the design thinking. But one thing that's consistent is this notion, 
in order to innovate is to have a is to have collaboration and and i'm sure i'm not so so one way that i see that ohana playing a role in in salesforce is that it is uh i'm not sure if if clear as i'll use the word if it was framework or tool or or approach but this is a way to kind of break down some of these barriers with individuals that that we tend to create uh, or what for silos or whatever. But this Ohana is a, a way of of uh, building this comfort level, building this extension. They use the word a family. So so I'm not sure you can get anything more powerful than family uh, as a as a as kind of a, a framework, uh, an approach to to build collaboration, to build uh, synergies, to break down certain walls. Uh, I would assume that doesn't mean everything is copacetic all the time. You know, family argues, family debates, but but this is one way to tear down walls and build bridges opposed to um, working in silos. At least this is what I hear and, and think about. Um, and Ohana being, I mean, I it was wonderful that Giselle shared that it was a Hawaiian word because I was thinking, where does it come from? But um, so this is a, a tool that they're using tied to the values within the organization to uh, create this culture for collaborating. One thing that, that I would love to add on to that piece as well, it, it, it's almost like a three-pronged approach, right? Because it's collaboration and innovation and breaking down some of those silos to really celebrate these new ideas. But trust is also such an important element to incorporate because you know, sometimes people are afraid to bring up their ideas and to speak up. Uh, and, and that's something that really should be celebrated. And everyone is equal, especially, you know, we, we need to hone in on that messaging here and the opinions that they bring to the table is valid. Um, and it needs to be a safe space that, that should be created in order to really enhance the collaboration across the board to continuously innovate. Absolutely great. <clears throat> um, Great insights there, Claire. And you know, to as you alluded to earlier, you know, the Ohana isn't just just the employees. It's our customers. It's our partners. Uh, it's the broader Salesforce community, and that's and that's where it kind of gets to our our next point. You know, Salesforce is a, is an open source platform, and what that means is we extend our technology <clears throat> at even the most basic and broadest level to to those that want to learn it and those that want to develop on it. So our partners, you know, have an opportunity to to develop on a, a free edition of the Salesforce platform. And what this means, they can go in there, sign up for free. Uh, you know, they can learn it, do it themselves, develop tools that ultimately can be deployed on our app exchange and, you know, be a source of revenue for that company. And this type of, you know, open sourced innovation, you know, really empowers, uh, you know, the broader community, empowers those developers. Uh, but is really kind of at our core, again, of that innovation piece, extending that innovation, making it open source, not hoarding it, not <clears throat> not keeping it internal, but again, extending it to to the broader world, honestly. Um, so, you know, that's it's really kind of, again, goes back to the core of what we do. And on top of that, and as we continue to extend into the Salesforce ecosystem, we've got our community, which uh, we offer through uh, free trainings through the Trailhead uh, platform. This is where you can go in and skill up and you can learn about all the products, um, not only just products, but our processes. Uh, there's um, personal development on there as well. Again, just a platform that extends that, that innovation to the broader community. It's free, doesn't cost anything. Uh, again, just trying to keep that open source, moving that forward. Our Trailblazer community is where you can go for, you know, to the idea exchange, uh, you can cross collaborate with other trailblazers, other admins. This is across companies, uh, across uh, those that are internal to the, to Salesforce as well. Uh, again, just sharing ideas, moving the innovation forward at even uh, at the broadest and widest level. And ultimately, that kind of makes up the the entire Salesforce ecosystem. Claire, as I know you've got a lot to add to to these two components, and I, I did a quick flyby, but would love your input here as well. Oh, Riley, you, you couldn't have said it better. I mean, it, we, we alluded to that earlier. It's part of our Ohana. That's what makes, you know, our, our company 
just continuously innovate by incorporating other ideas from our partners, from our community, collecting feedback along the way, training and enablement and learning from each other um, as we're continuing to move forward in the marketplace. And last but not least, and then we'll open it up to some Q&A is ultimately it's an extension of all of these components that lead to our customer success. And I've, and I've got bi-directional arrows here because it's really a, a flywheel effect and, and a feedback loop here that drives that success, not only delivering that success to our customers, but hearing from them, understanding how they're moving forward every day, being engaged with them even after their customers to solve their challenges that are ongoing um, and ever changing. So it's it's through that um, that really kind of drives this this entire cycle. I'll ask Claire Zell to add a little color and then we can certainly open it up to some Q and A. I think the only piece to hone in on is is earlier when Riley alluded to the golden circle um, and starting inwards. Uh, customer success is at the center, right? And so um, everything that you're seeing there across the Salesforce organization, across the ecosystem, it's all to help our customers at the end of the day um, connect to theirs. So um, it's, it's a great platform. Um, happy to take any questions. And, you know, hopefully this was helpful for the group as well as we walk through this today. Absolutely. This was... Uh, wonderful. If I could kind of reconnect it back to uh, a couple or several of the concepts in our class um, and to to kind of honor what Clarizel and Riley have shared. Um, when I hear everything that you're you're sharing, I'm able to map them to directly to the content and tools and, and frameworks that we're we're learning in class. And I would just kind of like to highlight them to, to make sure that everyone is, is easily able to make these connections. So at the bottom level uh, is part of this cultural, well, I mean, all of it is part of the cultural building, but some of the biggest um, concepts of creating culture is what do they, does a company stand for? And these are the values. And certainly innovation was one of the key values to help drive it throughout the organization. How they are going to build, break down bridges and collaborate they're using Ohana and this broader extension, not just internally, but also extending this Ohana into what's traditionally found outside of the boundary of the firm, whatever, suppliers, customers, et cetera. But there's no distinction between that boundary of the firm, at least uh, that, that, that we can see or that's been expressed. The role of innovating product services, and they're doing this through uh, platforms. The concept of platform was used over and over is used in a few different contexts, so uh, we can talk more because it's important um, to know, you know, when and what we mean by platform. Uh, we talk about ecosystems, the community and partnership, uh, collaborating, uh, com crowdsourcing, uh, creating a community, wisdom of crowds, all in this, this community that they're building. And then finally, they were tying it back to the why, which was the why they do these things back to the user. Um, and customer and understanding their needs and the user's needs and this human centered approach uh, to drive um, solutions for them, which strongly relates to the design thinking course. If you guys remember that uh, being a human centered, user centered um, needs analysis and such. So uh, I just wanted to highlight that and frame how each one of these levels and, and the broader conversation is directly mapping to the concepts that we've talked in class. Um, thank you again, uh, Riley and uh, Claire Zella, and I'd like to turn it over for Q&A. Don't be shy. We know that we know the questions are out there. I, I have a question if, if while everyone thinks, because I knew I threw them right on them. I, you know. The, the MBA cohort is from a range of different industries. Um, not every industry or company that they work for had this embedded from the beginning. You know, Benioff is famous and for, for being innovative, Salesforce, and you know, being out there in California and I believe Silicon Valley, or I'm not sure, but uh, um, um, you know, it's been embedded from day one, but not all organizations 
have that. Um, this is certainly the framework to continue it, you know, but any thoughts, comparisons from where you guys came from that may have been more uh, legacy uh, cultures and to the differences between this culture and or uh, or vice versa, or just, you know, how can we empower students who are, are in companies now that may not have innovation as a val core value uh, historically or this types of mindset and cultural, you know, uh, embeddedness? Any thoughts? I know Clara Zell smiling as I, as I am because uh, I actually interviewed with Clara Zell before I came to Salesforce and I think we connected a lot on our, our, our past and um, you know, those organizations that we had worked for that may have not been as forward thinking or as innovative. And uh, it, it's definitely a challenge. I think that <clears throat> uh, if it's not at the core from, from a top level down, it, it definitely thwarts uh, that innovation throughout the organization. Even at the individual level, you don't feel as empowered and your ideas may not be as heard. So, um, I, you know, I, I, I came from an, a, a very big organization uh, prior to coming to Salesforce, a number one real estate developer, retail real estate developer in the world. And I can tell you that we were so far behind the times, not only in terms of technology, but in terms of processes. And then ultimately in terms of people, because no one was empowered to share those ideas uh, and, and move the business forward and into the 21st century. But at the, it's got to be a kind of at the heart of what you do, and then you can kind of distill it down to a real personal level. How can you innovate personally if you're not empowered through the organization? Um, there, there's ways to do that, but it's it's certainly challenging in bigger organizations. Claire, I'll, I'll turn it to you for your experience as well. Yeah, you know, I, I'd say it's a good question, first and foremost. I, I came from Deloitte and, and innovation was, was part of Deloitte. I mean, it's one of the consulting firms who celebrates that they're leading from the front. Um, but there's still been instances where I came across an instance where, you know, there's a process there and some of the feedback is, well, that's the way we've always been doing it. And when you hear any comments like that, you, regardless of the culture of the organization, I do think that, you know, we as individuals have the, we, we should um, have the power to say, hey, let's think about this a little bit differently. You can innovate um, on your own as well and, and try to socialize that with others and, and get their buy-in and sponsorship and, uh, you know, partnership together to try to make some small changes, even if you may face some of those cultural differences. Um, because if you don't, I, I, I think that it's, it's going to be uh, a, a lagging mindset almost, and that you'll never be able to get over those challenges if you don't celebrate that innovation piece. So you may run into some cultures with other organizations or industries, um, and, and and that's okay. I think that you can take some small steps to, to try to change that in a different direction and try to bring some other team members um, on board as well. Did that help? Was that a, a clear answer? Yes, I mean, these are one of the biggest yes. challenges and to, to crack the code, um, you know, for, for creating an innovative culture. I know uh, several people on this call might work for the government. I work for the state, which is, and, um, you know, others might be in banking, others might be in, in um, health uh, services, and I'm not sure on a uh, state or or local level and these are bureaucratic institutions so we're trying to empower our students to you know uh, help make this leap uh, even if it's baby steps which we, we've talked about but this is one of the biggest challenges within organizations and why innovation strategies or initiatives fail one I heard if it's not top down that makes it difficult but that doesn't mean that you can't innovate or start to socialize and enroll people in this process, in this thinking, in this mindset, in this culture, who are around you. And it's through this socialization process that you talked about. So it's possible. And in fact, you know, we as MBA students and, and leaders here have have, uh, have some responsibility also to make change as well. So um, yeah, that's, a, that's a good point. I, I just want to add some color to it as well as that we, we always talk about, I should say, 
the challenge the status quo is is always socialized and th that can be kind of tough right your challenge the status quo to me means going with an idea pushing for that idea whatever that may be and really at salesforce we take a much more of a beginner's mindset almost that start with why asking why why are we doing this kind of being more inquisitive and questioning and trying to understand even if you kind of already know but i think that when you come with that beginner's mindset to try to understand things, pushing for innovation, getting others to think that way as well, uh, can be a powerful tool in moving innovation forward and ideas forward as well. Riley, this yeah. is uh, Stacey Haggerty. And uh, I was actually in the management design thinking class back in January when you came and spoke and Gisela was in the class. So I work for Tech Data, and I used to work for them back in the early 2000s, and innovation from certainly a level that I was at was not something that would necessarily have been encouraged. It was more that top-down approach. Um, but around the time I took the management design thinking class, we actually rolled out ID8. So now our company openly asks us for problems that we need creative solutions to solving. And that's great. They've actually started working on some things. But can you give an example of any one of the companies that you've worked with, maybe um, you know, University of Miami or someone who's here on your slide or another company and some of the things you've helped them solve? Yeah, I, I kind of threw up some of our customer success stories in and around uh, the education space. I, I have only personally worked for um, on a few non or for profit colleges and universities, so I can only kind of speak a little bit more toward that. But um, Claire, I know you've got a uh, you know, you've worked on a number of deals over the last three, three, four years. So maybe you've got some color on on one or two of those. Two, um, tons of different. So deals. many the board yeah yeah i mean we we oftentimes work on um you know i, I mean look with, with customers specifically it, it's always going in and, and understanding what some of their key pain points are um and you know I, I i'd say at the heart of it it can be anything from taking manual or antiquated processes across the board with with silos within the organizations um, and our team goes in and, and we do some deeper dive discovery and understand how the information flows between one or the other. Um, and, and then ultimately we position that solution to, to solve for those challenges, whether or not that's enabling them to have visibility across the organization, like how they're doing from a revenue perspective, what are some opportunities for cross-selling or upselling, how they can continue to expand within the market. Um, and, and that's just a couple of examples that, that we can hone in on that. Um, with sports teams, for instance, they can leverage and, and innovate through using our solutions to get closer to their customers and, you know, reach out to them at, at the right time and market to them effectively. Um, and so that's a couple of examples where we've also helped. I think a little bit more close to home, um, Stacy, an example recently just internally at Salesforce as well. Um, is is the whole concept where we we got together as a team? And maybe this example resonates with you, and if it doesn't, and I'm totally off base, just let me know. Um, but you know, we we got together as a team, and we were like, hey, you know, we kind of feel like there's this sometimes because of everything that's going on with COVID right now, and you know, it's anxiety driven. A lot of folks are at home. Some of us can kind of feel like we're on an island, and so what can we do to um, you know improve that a little bit? And so the whole idea came up. It was, you know, it, it came up on Wednesday, uh, this past Wednesday. And we're like, well, maybe we could do something like a buddy initiative um, and just partner together randomly with people that we usually don't interact with on a daily basis um, and, you know, make it have each other attend one meeting a week. And that's an example of, of taking some feedback from the team, um, innovating through creating this type of initiative and now rolling it out, which ultimately has a ton of great downstream effects um, in terms of just collaborating together, feedback, learning from each other. So that's an internal example from customer facing examples that can go all over the board in terms of the solutions that we offer. Um, so I kind of took a two, two pronged approach here. Let me know if I talked in circles, Stacey, or if that answered your question. 
No, that's actually great. And I was actually on a call with my senior VP this week, and that was something um, that I had suggested. It wasn't so much a random colleague, but some of the teams that I used to sit around, because my job personally, I don't own a product. My product is within uh, like an HP laptop. And we've lost some of that touch, some of that communication where I used to walk over, have coffee with them in the morning and just kind of chat and talk about uh, creative ideas in a day. And now, um, you know, you don't have that personal thing. So kind of like you're talking, you feel like you're on an island at times. And um, I had suggested something about maybe just doing uh, a team call once a week with them, just kind of like a coffee break, nothing real formal, but you know, just kind of catching up. So kind of the same thing, but no, that's a great example. I appreciate it. Thank you. Sure thing. And I, and to add to more of an external example, Stacy, of one of the biggest things that we get, we get asked obviously as Salesforce is, you know, Salesforce uses Salesforce first and foremost, um, you know, and a lot of other companies can't say that the products they develop, they actually use, but a lot of our customers will just say, how does Salesforce use Salesforce? How do you, how are you guys using it? Show us how you're making a difference in your organization so we can uh, employ and um, launch some of those initiatives within our own organization. So that's, that's kind of really gotten a lot of traction. I think Claire is all over what, like the last 18 to 24 months, um, truly. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's part of our, we have this concept of, of virtual SICs where we try to get executive teams together. And that's one of the topics where we showcase Salesforce on Salesforce and talk about how our team is using it. Um, and, 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 and that acronym SIC is a Salesforce Innovation Center. So it's an engagement that we, we take at the highest level. Sorry. <laughs> well, thank you, Riley. I think one thing to comment to with innovation, maybe this is a little off topic, but sometimes the ideas that may come up, they, they're not so great and that's okay. You know, I, I, I just want to hone in on with innovation, you should feel the freedom to, to try things, provide some feedback. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. Take a step back, formulate it again and try something different. Like you have to be open to change across the board um, and, and be able to pivot at any point in time. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Um, maybe we have time for one more short question just to be respectful of everyone's time. I know some of us might have the 11 a.m. meeting as well. Uh, real quick, where where's everyone uh, calling in from? I'm, I'm in St. Pete. Clearwater, Dunedin. Clearwater, Dunedin. I'm up in Lake City, Florida, visiting my dad. Is that it? I think. Uh, Ray, I didn't hear you. Maybe you did. Oh yeah, I'm in uh, Saint Petersburg, Florida, as well. Okay. It, that's a cool place as well, so don't be shy. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. All right. Um, any last questions before we wrap up with our guests? I, I can't thank Riley and Clairzell enough. Um, I would look at you, Riley, but you still have the PowerPoint slides up there, and, and so we can't see you. But um, uh, I can't thank you enough for willing to to join us today on this Saturday morning, best place to be yeah. on Teams. Um, you know, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of everyone in, in this class. And, you know, this is a murky topic. It's, it, there's no, if it was so easy and so rational, everyone would be innovating. Everyone would be an Apple or a Salesforce or whatever. And everyone would be known as a Steve Jobs. But that's the reason why it's not so, uh, it's, it's challenging. It's difficult. So, you know, we're trying to unpack this and this is how Salesforce has cracked the code, how Salesforce continues to perform uh, through these uh, different levels and what was shared today. So uh, thank you, both of you, for joining us and, and inspiring us uh, uh, on this Saturday morning. Um, I hope that we can, you know, continue to have this dialogue and collaboration going forward. And I'm, I'm sure there's students here, if you're ever 
considering a job change or sales force in your organization for other things, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you have a personal context. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it, Steve, for, or Dr. B, for having us as well. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll reach out back to you guys uh, again uh, for the class. Uh, maybe if there's some other questions you might have, because we have the midterm coming up. Um, of course, I have content to present, but I do have an 11 o'clock as well. But um, maybe you want to address some questions for the midterm or some challenges you might face, or is there anything that I need to clarify? I think we're all trying to surprise you with what you're going to get to see uploaded. What? Yeah, perfect. So I guess at a minimum, um, class is six weeks. It's week three. We've covered some content. We've gotten our feet wet in terms of what innovation is to build a common foundation. Module two is kind of expanding that and going into a bit of a deeper dive into some of the bigger frameworks and approaches that organization use. I know I've mentioned tools. I would say um, when I talk about tools, I talk about the tool kit or other things you have used to help frame your problem, your solution, your narrative. So of course, data I think is important. Um, I feel that there's a distance somehow, I don't know if I've reinforced enough if you have ability to do outside research, research, of course, that would be part of the innovation process to know what cases are similar to know whatever. And that's going to help you drive your story, your narrative and your argument. Um, but we, we, you know, the class of six weeks, we don't have a lot of time to put emphasis on that or. And then the whole, you know, asynchronous, you know, it's it's challenging as well. And then you guys are working, who knows, 60, 80 hours a week as well. But. Uh, so highlight the tools as well as most importantly, um, I guess what I would like to say is, you know, you have a, be very clear with the, the, the problem. Um, what I often find, not in just class, but we often get distracted or, or we have a problem that's too large and, and that could, that could, um, sink our, our motivation or, or, or misfocus us. So small, either, you know, be very specific with the, the, uh, the problem, because that's gonna help you drive a, a proper solution that you can actually execute. And then I would also like to highlight, you know, when we talk about these uh, concepts, approaches and frameworks in the class, they can be molded and used in many different ways. So they can be used for the solution, but they can also be used prior to the solution, the development phase or the pre-development phase or the testing and piloting phase. And then they could always be used after the solution or during the solution and, uh, for feedback and iterative pro which is very common in the project management. So we want to suggest that, you know, there's, you know, the, you know, the, the development of the idea, the, the, the implementation of, 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 of development and process, um, you know, the, execution and then you know the the feedback after the ongoing but these tools can be used at any point so that means they can be used within and embedded in project management it's not well known and understood but in some of the modules i talk about particularly with wisdom of crowds and crowdsourcing how the hollywood stock exchange uses this to forecast box office revenue which is allows them to potentially allocate resources one way or the other when they're developing the long the movie, which takes a long cycle to develop. Same thing for predicting. Best Buy, who's used prediction markets as a way of forecasting and having a better idea of how to drive revenue or um, uh, provide needs in order to drive top line revenue in the short term to meet certain expectations in the quarterly outcome. So these tools can be used in many different ways in many different categories before, during, and after. So think about that as well. So it's not just tied to during your solution. Does that help also? Okay. Um, you know, I'm looking for a good, clear, and concise narrative. 
um, identify why the problem is important, identify what the problem is, maybe cases, examples, uh, how the tools such as how might we and the design brief stroke developing the proposition, our tools have helped you develop that, what the next steps are, where you've identified these concepts to apply potentially, and where you're going. You don't necessarily have to be tied to one problem right now, but you should be very close to narrowing it down. We only have three weeks left, so. Um, but again, this is all iterative. This is a way to get feedback to, you know, we could think of this midterm as a prototype and iteration of the final presentation. The, to to Clara, uh, Clara's um, point was the idea of enrolling people on the local level that, you know, where you, you, maybe the organization isn't supportive, but the local level of, uh, of, of enrolling people to socialize them in. And you may have to do that many times. I have a friend who helped Cirque du Soleil innovate. And she had this broader innovation strategy that Cirque du Soleil needed to become more innovative because they seem to have lost some of their founding innovation and creativity. And she had to make the presentations over 35 times through different levels of the organization, through different you know, silos, whatever the case may be. So this is not uncommon. And this is one step within this course. I mean, it's a compressed six weeks. So this is what we're, we're doing. Um, any last thoughts, questions? Did you guys like having Riley and Claire Zell here? And was it helpful? Did it, did, were we able to directly connect it to the content? that we're covering in class. Okay, cool, good, good. Because that's the point, uh, that, that's the point. Um, I have other alumni who want to share. If they're at IBM or they were at leading innovation at Boar's Head, things like this, is this something of interest? Do we want to meet again next week? Do we, I mean, um, I hear, I see two nodding, but I can't see everyone <laughs> or hear. Was that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, so let's tentatively put 10 o'clock next Saturday. I'll just double check my schedule because I did book uh, double book myself uh, this week. So that's why I have to get off at, you know, at 11. But, um, you know, again, today I think was also excellent bringing in alum, continuing both the design thinking of how students can be re-engaging to improve the program but also talking about the content and why it's relevant to organizations. And we saw how Salesforce uses it and creates a, an innovate, a culture for innovation and then perpetuates through using the concepts and why these are relevant. So I would like to thank all of you who have joined us today. The best place to teams on a Saturday morning. Uh, I wish you a great day. Again, always reach out to us on the channel that we have on Teams or email or canvas or whatever but look forward to uh, your midterm presentations and you know continuing this journey with you sounds See good you. Thank awesome you. thank you so much bye guys have a great day bye, bye.